Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to finally create our own table and start connect, creating our own ideas. And by ideas, I mean basically uh, tweets. So I have renamed tweets on Twitter to ideas. So we're going to create our ideas table and we're going to start actually storing them on database and also showing them on this page. So let's get started. Now, I assume you guys already have connected to your database and have your configuration set up which is what we did on the previous episode. So I'm not going to cover this again. I already have mine. And before we actually do that, we first need to create our migration, right? If you remember, migrations tell uh, Laravel how to create our table. And obviously there is a lot of code to write here. I don't like typing all of this. So in order to automate this process, we can actually use Artisan. And by now you guys should, you know, be familiar with Artisan. Artisan is a command tool that comes with Laravel, right? and we used it to basically serve our application. I have it running on this side. Uh, we use it to run migrations and you can use it to do a lot of other stuff to create controllers. If you remember, this is actually what we used. So we can actually also use it to create migrations. So all you have to do is type in PHP artisan, make migration, and then name your migration file, right? So uh, the convention is generally to use uh, underline instead of a space for spacing. So I'm just going to say create ideas table. That's it. Just type that in. And you can see it just created our migration. And a lot of it is actually quite smart. It can pick up the name of your table from that. So you can see it's very similar to what we had in the users table migration. And it picked up the name of my table. But in case Laravel got the name wrong or you want to change it, you always can. Uh, you can, you know, change it to whatever you like, okay? Or comments. It's up to you. But for now, I'm going to keep it the same. Obviously, Laravel got it right. And you can see we have a migration up, which creates the table, and migration down just drops the table. So we don't generally need to touch the migration up unless you're creating migration down, sorry, unless you're creating a single column. In those cases, yes, you need to write some code here. But for the most part, you're not going to be touching this part. And we're going to only be working with the ideas up, migration up. So now what we can do here is actually in order to, what do we need for our ideas? So I'm just going to write them here in this comment section. So we need the idea itself. So it's going to be basically a string, a var char. And I have decided that our ideas are limited to 240 characters. So that's the limit. So I'm going to use a var char. Uh, what else do we need? We're going to need the user, but for now we don't have any users table. And then I'm going to also have a likes. So it's going to keep track of how many likes this idea has. So this one, I'm going to have it to be an integer for now, or we can use an unsigned integer. So it's default is going to be zero. And then we need a created at to know that it was created and maybe an updated at to know if it was updated or not, or last, what, when was the last time it was edited. And for now, these are all the things we need. Later on, we can add more if we need them, but that's what we are going to use for now. So Laravel already has the table ID. So this is going to be our key. So that's going to be our table ID. This timestamps, uh, as I mentioned on the previous episode, is actually automatically going to create our created at and updated at. So that always comes with Laravel. So what we need to do is in order to create uh, the idea itself, I'm going to say table. And then here you're going to have a bunch of options. So string is always going to be varchar. And you can pass the column name here. So I'm going to call it the idea, right? So you're going to have an idea. Or we can maybe use content, why not? And then next up, we need a table. And you can actually type in integer. So if you have something like VS Code or PHP Storm, it should recommend to you. You have integer, you have integer increments, big integer, tiny integer, all that. I'm going to go with unsigned integer. And I'm going to call it likes. And in order to add a default, you can just do default like this and pass in a value. So I want it to be zero by default. And for now, that is all we need. I don't want actually anything else. I want this table to be super simple. And yeah, for now, we're going to keep it simple. Later on, we can add more columns. I don't want to confuse you guys that much. So now that we have done this, we have basically created our 
own migration. And to make sure it works, you can basically run the following command, php artisan migrate. And voila, we can see it was done. So that means our uh, table was created and I'm gonna just quickly check that it was. Use YouTube, so that's my show tables. And you can see that it did actually create the ideas table. So it's working. Now that we have that, in order to actually interact with this table, so the migration alone won't allow us to interact with our uh, table, right? In order to do that, we need to have a model. And if you remember on the MVC, when I explained MVC, the model layer or models are how we interact with the database or with our table. And generally, each table is going to have its own corresponding model. So for example, we have a user's model and Laravel already ships with a user a user's table. So we also have a user's model, right? Now we can actually create, so now we need to create an idea model. And again, remember this is singular. So we had the user's table and the model itself is going to be user. So it's going to be singular. Now we can create the models manually by copying this and extending the models class. It's going to be a hassle and you obviously have to memorize the names. So in order to automate the process, you can actually automatically create the model for yourself by typing in PHP artisan make model and then the name of your model. I'm going to name it idea. And again, go with singular. That's the way to go. And once you have done that, boom, it automatically pops in on the left. We have our idea model and at its simplest form, basically a model in Laravel is going to extend the model class from illuminate database eloquent model. And if you actually go ahead and take a look at this model class and I'll resize this a little bit, you can see it has some table re related stuff, primary key. And if you scroll down, it has a bunch of cool, useful stuff. For example, if you call down, you can see it's very big. So there is an all method. All basically it gets all the rows from your table. It has a bunch of more and we will be using them throughout the course, right? So for the most part, you don't actually need to write any code. You can just use everything inside this model class to interact with your database. So now that we have that, let's take a look at how we can actually uh, create an idea first using this idea model. So I'm going to go to our dashboard controller for now, just for testing purposes. Later on, uh, we'll change this. So I'm just going to go and create some ideas. Okay. This is going to be just for testing purposes and to make sure that it is working, I'll use my MySQL connection here. I don't know why I closed it. select all from ideas table. So I'm just running a simple query. And obviously right now we have no items in our table. So in order to create a new database entry, all you need to do is call your model. So for example, I want to create a new idea. So just type in idea like this. So I'll say idea equals new idea. And then you can assign all of its properties or values. So for example, in our ideas table, I'm going to open up my migration. We had content and we had likes. You don't need to pass the ID or the timestamp. Those are done automatically by Laravel. So I'm going to say idea dot content equals test. And I'm going to say idea dot likes equals zero. Now you don't actually need to assign likes to zero because we do have a, a default, but for now I'm going to do it. And then to actually save it or store it in the database, you can just say idea dot create. And that's it. That's all the code you need to create a new database entry. All right. So I'm just going to go and open up our uh, dashboard page again. So all we're doing is basically creating a new record and then showing the view. And if you don't get any errors, which we are, and it's telling us content doesn't have a default value. Did I make a mistake somewhere? 
oops, sorry, here I should be save. I, I think I would create idea.save. And I think we should work. Okay, so it worked now. And to make sure that it did actually create our record, I'm going to run this query again, select everything from ideas. And you can see now we have a new record, right? As you can see. And I'm going to actually run this page again one more time, like two times. And now we should have three records, and we do, although they all have test as their content. Basically, now we have learned how to create a record. Now, there's actually an easier way of doing this, because if you have, for example, five or six or, you know, 10 columns, having to manually assign each value can be a bit annoying and cumbersome. So the way you can automate the process is actually by passing an array here. So in your array, you can say content equals test. And here you can say likes. Actually, I'm going to remove likes because we don't need it. And so you can also do it this way. Now we are going to get an error here and I'll show you guys why that is. For security purposes, Laravel doesn't allow you to uh, pass in your variables like this. And we will learn about that later on when we talk about validation. But in order to allow this to happen, you can basically go to your idea model and you need to set a property. So I'm going to open up my idea model and we need to basically set a property called fillable. And I'm just going to copy it from our users model. You can go to the users model, copy this. I'll just copy this called fillable. And I'm going to paste that back in our idea model. And here you can, you're basically telling Laravel what columns are assignable or mass assignable. And for now, I'm going to put content and like. That's the only two we have, right? And now that we have done that, we can actually do it this way instead of the old way, right? But in order for this way to work, you always need this fillable set on your model. So now that we have set it, it's going to make it so we write less code, right? Before we had to do idea.content equals test. It's going to remove all of this extra code, right? So it's going to be quick and easy. We can just pass it as an array. And if we reload the page, it actually works. And I'll check the query again. We have four columns. So this is basically how you create a new row or entity in your table. So now that we have done that, I'll actually comment this out for now because I don't want a bunch of records on my table. Let's take a look at how we can actually display these uh, ideas. Or actually, why not? Let's keep it. Why not? We can have like 10 or 20 of them. No issues. And the way we can do that is actually, I'm going to pass it to our uh, view. And I'm going to say ideas. And the way you do it is basically you call the idea model and it's a static method. I'm going to say colon, colon, double colon, and I'm going to say all. And if you remember when we were scrolling to the model class, the Laravel model class, there was a function called all. So that's basically what I'm calling. And it was a static function or a static method, right? As you can see this one. So, and all it does, you can actually read the definition get all of the models from the database. That's all it does. And it returns a collection of all those records. Okay, and we can actually view this. So there are two ways we can view this. We can use a var dump, right, which is a PHP function. We can do it this way. So I'm going to actually run this so you guys can see what we get in return. I'll reload the page. And oh my god, this looks very, very ugly. So in order to make it look a bit better, PHP actually has a better version of dump, war dump, just called dump. So instead of war dump in Laravel, you write dump and it gives you a stylized war dump, right? So if we reload the page, it actually looks kind of nice. So it doesn't hurt the eyes. And you can see, uh, we are getting a collection, which is a database type from Laravel. And it has an items section and inside it, you can see we have six items and each of them are an idea class. So a type of idea. 
So yeah, that's it. I'm just going to for now remove this and I'm going to show you guys how we can actually view them or display them in our view. So I'm going to go to our dashboard view <clears throat> and I'm going to open this up. And we have a bunch of stuff here. So basically our ideas are a card. So I'll, this is basically our ideas. I'm going to surround it by a four each. And if you guys remember, this is how we do it in Laravel Blade. And I'm going to say loop in ideas and have each of them be an idea. I'll move this under our card. And actually, if I don't do anything and I just reload, it already works. As you can see, we have a bunch of ideas one after another. Although I believe I did make a mistake. Yeah, I put it after the card body. It needs to be up here. I did make a mistake. I'll format this a little bit so this is how it should be so this is the start of the card and this is the end of it and i might actually put it a bit above it so we get the margin top as well why not let's do that okay good so now we have each of our card components and what I'm going to do is, this is where the idea itself is supposed to be. I'll remove this. And we're going to use our blade syntax. And I'm going to say idea. And to access any of its properties, you just do it like you would from a, accessing a property from class. And I'm going to say content. That's it, guys. So we are now able to actually display our ideas. And this is supposed to be the likes. I'll do the same for likes and I say idea dot likes. Last but not least here we have our date. And for now I'm going to do it super simple later on. I show you guys how to do it a bit better and I'm going to say created at. And uh, as you can see here at the bottom we have our table. We have a created at and an updated at which automatically was created by Laravel. So it's going to show the date that our record was created. Later on uh, we make it a bit more beautiful but for now this should do so i'm going to save it i'll move over here i reload and you can see it is actually working we have all of our records and what i'm going to do is actually i'm going to change this to hello youtube the one we are creating i reload the page i'll reload it one more time and yep hello youtube is at the end so right now it's ordering it ascendingly so from the lowest id so that's why the last one is at the bottom so let's actually see how we can sort it out and it's very easy to do with eloquent so you can just basically uh, define it like this you can say order by and then you tell a lot about what you want to order it by i'm going to say created at and then as the second argument you need to passing the order so i want it to be descending from the latest to the earliest and then just pass in get all the records that are matching this so i'll save this and i reload and you can see hello youtube is at the top and then the rest of them are under it right so you can see works just fine now there are a lot more things we can do with eloquent so and and our models but for now this is I think good enough for now the video is getting a bit long so i gave you guys a lot to work with so i recommend you play around with it a little bit and you know try to order it with different ways maybe look into creating your own tables if you like but for now this should be good enough on the next episode we're going to explore more things so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you have any questions you can always leave them in the comment section below and i'll try to answer all of you guys this question don't forget to like your video and subscribe for more content. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.